And hello everyone, welcome to the Warper Confusion Entertainment Review. It's time for episode number 46. I'm one of your hosts, Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Warper. Alongside me, as always, and returning back to the show after his, like, one episode hiatus, it's Patrick, a.k.a. Mr. Fusion. Greetings and salutations, everybody. Glad to, glad to be back. Did catch the uh, the episode with uh, Crofteria and, and, and Jackie. Great, great episode, man. Yeah, Good I stuff. really, really enjoyed recording that. Uh, and now, like, Joey's playing Dragon Age, so I'm like, dude, when you're done, you gotta go back and watch all, watch that podcast and let us know what you think. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to give him, I was gonna give him my Ultimate Edition disc. Because he doesn't have the DLCs. Because you can't get the server stuff anymore. For the first game. It's like, oh yeah, and I have the disc. I'll have to get that to him. Oh. Uh, so what have you been up to? What's it been? Four weeks since you were on an episode? Ish? About, about four weeks, yeah. It's been about a month. Uh, you know, man, just really a lot of work. Work's been really crazy for me. But catching up on all of the stuff, things we'll be talking about today. But I also went back and started re finishing up my rewatch of season one of Agents of Shield, uh, and Justified season one as well. So I dip into those here and there. You know, I I'm really interested with how the new the new uh, season of Justified is going to go. I really am. Now that I now that I've like you know starting over again, you think about so many things that have happened through the entire series. You're like, okay, I'm really curious on how, how they're going to paint that one. Um, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine. He had just watched the the Jack Reacher show. The Reacher loved it. And he was kind of curious about how the books played out. And I'm like, yeah, it's a lot more like the book than, than the movies were. So, uh, but that's really it, man. And just, you know, really hanging out. And I haven't been playing a whole lot of video games lately. It's just not, nothing's really jumped on my plate. I think I got, I played a lot of, of Apex with you and I was playing a lot on my own and I got a little burnt out. So I was like, I'm going to take a little break from that. So uh, just been enjoying the summertime, watching some baseball. NBA Summer League's kicked off, so I'm going to be dipping into that into that this evening. After yeah, did you catch the end of the Kings uh, uh, Magic game? Magic. I didn't see the ending of that. I knew uh, Palo was going off at the beginning. It was Kings hit back-to-back -back threes to force it overtime. Last one, of course, was King of Murray with a sweet pump fake to get Palo yeah. to fly by him, and then he's nailed the three with point two. But then Summer League o overtime rules are stupid, and it's first to score. Just the first basket? I think so. It's a sudden death basketball OT. I did not know that about Summer League, but okay. I didn't either. All and right. of course, Murray actually got stopped Powell from driving to the basket, but then the guy, he found a wide open guy cutting through the lane and you know, game over. So like, well, Look, shit, that's not basketball. I, well, we both know this. We, we both know that Keegan's going to be a pretty solid NBA player, but what I've seen in these two games, like a little bit briefly. Oh yeah, Powell's ready. Of, Paolo is, he's ready to go. Him and, I ready. think, I do think him and Murray were the most... Oh, they can play right now. Yeah, some tweaks necessary, of course, but like they're ready, right? Whereas, like, I think I think Jaden Ivey's also somewhat in that camp too. And my my issue with him is he just can't shoot that well. Yeah, it's kind true. of the same thing as Smith. Like he's missing a core component of his game, which is he doesn't have a long range jumper. Yeah, you know, not really. And so it's like, well, that'll take some work. Yeah, and it'll probably come yeah. quicker than they, than others because it's it's shooting. That's pretty fundamental stuff. But yeah, but yeah, just catching some summer league now. Been watching baseball, and you know we've been we, you know you you and I have a lot of conversation about the drama that is now becoming the Super Conference in college football. All that stuff. Oh man, there's been and so much. It's been so, crazy. It's been it's been a real and a lot of NBA off like the off season for the NBA has been very crazy, like a lot of activity. So sports wise, it's been a very fun summer. Usually it's a little quieter with just baseball, but it's actually been really cool this summer with with sports conversation. But been doing that honestly, watching you know watching all of our shows, The Stranger Things, you know watched you know Thor last a uh, couple nights ago, and then you know um, finished up Obi Wan. Pretty good show. Pretty not not I'm not gonna say blow you away, but pretty darn good Obi Wan story in my opinion. Uh, and then you know um, Miss Marvel. We'll probably talk about that the whole season. We'll wrap it up next week when the finale is finished up next Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying all of this stuff, man. Like, there's been some some good content out there. Yeah, like last night I was particularly spoiled. Um, we went and saw Thor: Love and Thunder on Thursday, and then last night after playing a round of golf, I watched uh, back to back. I watched the boys finale and then the, ser yes. the season finale of Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. <clears throat> straight up, that show was ten straight ten out of ten episodes. It's see, it's perfect. Now that it's now that it's finished, I can resub sub to Paramount and go watch it. Yeah, so, um, that, that's and my goal. Is to knock in out. August, Lower Decks is back, and Lower Decks is in a really cool spot where it got really good season two, and I'm hopeful they can carry that momentum into season three, and then it's Star Trek, like two really good Star Trek seasons in a, in a year. I'm game. 
Yeah. Feels like Star Trek's kind of coming back. You know, like having a moment again, which I like, which I love. It's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, on top of what we've been up to, of course, I'm Miss Marvel. I'm going to be watching episode five this this evening once we wrap up recording for video games. I've been doing a lot of the Outer Worlds. That game finally, like the second time through. Oh, now I like it now. I don't know what took me so long to get into it the first time, but I fell off and then I finally came back to it uh, earlier this year. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. I should be wrapping up the main story and DLC this week at some point. Might do some of that on stream. Cool. Um, but yeah, mostly it's been Thor and of course Stranger Things. The the finale was, as as expected, it was as good as the first half of the season. I did um, it with the boys, right? The right, boys like the boys. Fun. It const- constantly brings you energy. Kripke, he knows how to he knows how to write amazing antagonists. Yeah, you know, like that's one of the hallmarks of his early run of Supernatural is that yeah, like the leads were great, but their antagonists have always been great. We're always an equal, you know, in the story, and the boys is no different. We're like they have a standout antagonist, but every other you know they'll have various different like Deutero is it. Deutero antagonist is like the secondary antagonist. Yeah. Stuff like Victoria Newman or Soldier Boy or, you know, pick your pick your character. There he's really good at making characters like that and keeping them on the board for as long as possible. So I'm looking forward to where they're gonna go in season four. So that's now that we're through the intro stuff, where do we want to start with our smorgasbord of content? We've got three main stories. And yeah. I could gush a little bit about Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Uh, let's I'll, let's put Star Trek at the back end here because I know that's a big a big experience for you and I haven't watched it yet so I, I definitely want to hear your thoughts. Okay, I say I say let's start on the big one that we didn't. I you know we we were going to try to record last week but we couldn't do it. Stranger Things. Let's talk about the finale there. Um, okay, the Duffer Brothers did an outstanding job of one making folks feel like they're silly for being overly critical about the run times of both movies because they were like, look guys. It's on a streaming service. You can fucking pause the thing whenever you need to go to the bathroom or get something to eat. Like no one's requiring you. Like it's not going to run continuously, which is great. A great, a great, like kind of like pull the rug out from under those people that always find reasons to complain online. Um, outside of that, hey man, Steve, Steve survived. Dustin survived. I'm happy with that. You know, I was halfway um, right though because Dustin was heavily involved in the in the in the death. Well, when okay, let's talk about because we're gonna like. Should we just go ahead and say spoilers? Let's oh, yeah, hundred percent. It it's been out a couple weeks. All right, now. guys. Spoilers yeah. for the Stranger Things four finale. Stranger Things spoiler things. Let's go. Um, you know, I, we kind of figured um, that uh, that Eddie was gonna die. We kind of figured that both you and I when we watched the first half, right, a couple months ago. Um, the uh, and of course in the original the very first trailer you got to see the the guitar riff so you were wondering how it was going to play out and when it was going to play out I will say when when Eddie took off on that bike and Dustin ran after him I was like oh shit Dustin's gonna die it's like the swerve was coming I was like okay we're setting up Eddie is going to die which I was like I, we both knew that was probably going to happen but remember I said the dark horse death would probably be Dustin when he started like limping after him I was thinking oh my gosh like it's going to happen where where Eddie's like going to try to get up and Dustin's going to pull every, all the all the bats at him and he's going to end up dying but then it ended up being Eddie being the hero which is cool the guitar the guitar riff great of master course. of puppets master of puppets dude like yes Excellent. Yes, great pull by the Duffer Brothers. 1986, so of course they had to go right to you know what was relevant in terms of music in that year. Perfect pull for this this whole scene. Uh, the final fight with uh, Vecna, I enjoyed it, except for the fact that um, I, I get it. Both you and I had felt like there was where is the Mind Flayer, but the big reveal in Episode Eight was that he created the Mind Flayer, that it wasn't a real its own entity that he created. It was a bit disappointing because what it means to us is like, are we really just going to get a, a, a Vecna that comes back healed up, ready to go, like ready for the final battle? Like, is that really what we're going to get in the fifth season? And they've talked about it. They're expanding things a little different for the fifth season. The final season is going to have a much deeper plot because of what happens at the end of this episode. Other thing I got to complain about is, and we talked about this, um, the last, when we talked about the first, um, part of of this of season four was the whole thing about um will's sexuality and you and i had talked about it in chat as well that the duffer brothers had stated a couple weeks before this aired that's going to be resolved 
that was never resolved. That really wasn't. We got more of it pushing forward where it's like, okay, further hinting that expands on that he's possibly gay, but it didn't answer the question, which is what the Duffer brothers said was by the end of this season, you will have an answer to that. And that, I mean, I, I, when you, you said maybe they, maybe it's a little bit out of context. I showed you the quote that he, that one of them said mm-hmm. was like, Hey, no, this will be answered at the end of this season at the, after this, the, the finale. Uh, that was my only other complaint. Um, soundtrack is great. Acting is great. The final battle was really cool. Um, it does open questions, like I said about Vecna and it does open questions now that the upside down is, now attached to earth you know like what where do we go like you thought there was gonna be a, a, a big push forward i don't think so now i think season five is going to be immediately after after season four ended like we're gonna kick right off where we were yeah i could see we that now to. yeah like to. they can't just take three years to resolve it you know there's a like giant they're just gonna, three years of a big old hole with monsters coming out in hawkins is that really what we're gonna get and they're all gonna be like you know let's say freedom fighters that are working like with military to kind of like purge the, the the monsters that come out of the portal or like and I don't even know if the portal is open or what like I just know that we know that it opened and it creates death around it but did is it still open we don't we weren't really answered in that unless there was a quick shot that I may have missed yeah like but, it, basically it was like a Vecna one but not as not as much as he wanted like the plan didn't fully work his plan didn't fully come to fruition yeah my thought is is that because they were able to close it, close the rift, the death around the, the the epicenter of the rift is dying. So Hawkins may be a dead town. And that's really it. I think season five is going to be where they come back in to try to save, or not save people of Hawk, Hawkins, but kind of come back and fight within Hawkins, whatever's there, you know? Mm-hmm. They're going to like, like the military, the government will try to basically build an entire, they, they'll isolate the entire city of Hawkins, Indiana, and stuff comes in and out of it, like tries to get out, you know, here and there, and, and the kids have to go in there for something or another, like to to completely lock it off or like the end of this whole thing. Like they're, 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 they come to a realization, we have to kill Vecna. And obviously uh, Owens is still alive. We never mm-hmm. saw his death. Yep. So he's going he's gonna to have to play a part in what's going to push the, 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 the story forward in season five. And that's, you know, he helped push L forward in season four. He's obviously going to say, this is how we have to end it. We need you guys. You guys know how to fight it. You know, come out here, come back here and help us out. So I, but I think if, if, if that's only if they push it forward, like the timeline, uh, other than that, it's probably going to be immediately right when season four ended, they're going to have to pick up the pieces and everything. And the whole thing with Max is very interesting with her being in a coma. Is she blind or did L able, was a, L able to save her from that port? Because we don't really know. Is she permanently blind as well as all of her limbs are broken and all that? She's brain dead. Obviously, there's going to be a callback to Elle's mother um, because that's kind of what she saw that quick flashback when she saved uh, um, Max. But very, that was, you know, there was some, there were some sad moments, man, when Eddie died to hear, see that, that connection between he and Dustin because at the very beginning of the season, he and Dustin were like, cool. But then as the season went on, Dustin really showed like he cared and cared and cared. And then you started seeing in the last few episodes, Eddie really bonding to him. And then episode eight and episode nine, they they, they expressed their friendship and their love to each other. And that was really cool because it was just this whole dynamic of Dustin kind of, I think in the first few seasons, everyone loves Dustin. Like fans love Dustin, but I think the last uh, season two, season three, he got kind of, be, he became the, 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 the second wheel, wheel next to Will, with all of the relationship stuff going on. And, you know, he had, of course they gave him a girlfriend that's way out of state and he doesn't even get to see her at all in this season. So there's so many things that they could do, man, really at this point, Hopper and Hopper and Joyce's relationship is, you know, rekindled. Um, do, do, do the buyers come back to Indiana? If, it, if it's a flash forward, like, like so many things to ask at this point. And I'm, I'm really excited because they said that they really want to go deeper and darker in the fifth season. So the only thing is, are they going to keep these huge run times like they did this season? Because this was essentially two seasons in terms of run time compared to other seasons. So yeah. are they going to try to do that? I don't know, but great writing by the Duffers. You know, there's already talks of them rebooting Death Note, a live action Death Note for Netflix, which I think is really cool. I think they do a good job of that. Yeah, I think um, they would. Um, so yeah, man, I absolutely loved it. You know, I'm a big Stranger Things fan, Stranger Things fan because... It's a callback to my childhood in the 80s. The music, the fucking guitar solo with Master of Puppets, absolutely loved that part. Loved it. It was fantastic. And to see that, to see that TikTok with Metallica playing, uh, uh, duetting with 
the clip of Eddie playing on the on the on the on the trailer. Pretty fucking cool, man. Uh, very emotional. Like there were a lot of parts where you, it was very emotional, uh, but at the same time they managed to keep the pace going. It didn't really like stop for the emotion. Like you know, the, it kept moving forward and forward and forward. Like with Master of Puppets and that final battle with Vecna. Um, you could just like you, there were moments where you see that things are going to get pretty rough for people and somebody's going to die and while well, that's still happening like it's moving forward and yeah it was and then you know uh i forget the guy's name the uh the the witch hunt kid the high school basketball player oh yeah he gets fucking cut in half he get, wait the rift the rift half? opens under him and it literally cuts him in half i didn't see that part yeah he he gets knocked away from uh from Oh my god, what is the kid's name? Lucas. Lucas. He gets knocked away in the attic and he's like kind of knocked out as the rift opens under him and it like cuts him in half. Oh, I didn't see that. It's a gnarly way to go. Okay. I I because I was like, they really didn't they really didn't close that loop. See now now that makes okay. That's yeah, he did. It was a shot because I was watching this uh at work at the office, the finale, so obviously I missed that part. I missed that one shot. I was like Fuck, like, I know Lucas kicked his ass, knocked him down. Okay, great. Was able to get Max. But, like, we never had a closing of that loop right there. But now, obviously, it was a shot I missed, guys. Sorry. Uh, but, yeah, good, good, um, really good ending to season four, man. Really good ending. Yep. How about you? I really enjoyed it. I, obviously, there's some, I had some issues with it. Like, the whole Russia stuff, like, it, it just felt like, why did this take a whole season to resolve? Yeah. You know? Like, if you'd have got him out in episode six, would have been fine. But, you know, introducing that the Russians are experimenting and all that stuff gives you some more pieces to play with for episode f- or season five. Maybe they'll come back into the story somehow. Who's to say, you know, uh, what happens there? But I would have actually liked him to get to Hawkins sooner and actually be a part of the finale. Yeah. But I, I understand why they wanted to keep it separate. It just... It just felt kind of dragged out for me. Which does lead me to the question for season five. Like, do people in Hawkins know Hopper's alive? You know? Like, do they know he's not dead? No, they don't. They, 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 at the very beginning, in the first half, they said he was, he was, yeah, everyone thinks he's dead. They gave him a funeral and everything. Yeah. And now, he's going to show up. (laughs) Yeah. Like, are they all, is, are like, if they do an immediate pickup, you know, there's a bunch of monsters and shit going after people. Does Hopper, like, just pick up a gun and start saving people and go, yeah, I'm not dead. All right, everybody follow me. You know, or, like, does the military maybe surround the kids? You know, yeah. come in because they think L's the, who, what did it? And yeah. then Hopper saves them all or something like that. You know, or gets the, like, shows the military how to actually fight these things. And he picks up a flamethrower and just fucking goes to town. Like, the Conan sword was one of those dumb things that if you don't know it's the conan sword why why would anybody care why would anybody care yeah yeah but the fact that since nerds know it's the conan sword right yeah. but it's like who gives a shit and it's in a russian prison prison of all places right yeah it's, like, it's a fucking okay. easter egg guys it's a sword yeah, yeah. yeah like people were like oh why is that there who, who gives a shit right like they were using the fights they had the fight against the animals literally like two episodes ago everybody died so clearly they didn't pick shit up it was just on the ground figure it out uh, but you've 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 established that how their skin is weakened with 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 flames like you, yeah you, you, burn, which we you knew. burn them yeah yeah we knew that but it's been confirmed though like there was kind of a theory in the first couple of seasons that if you put put, you know, put fire on them you can weaken them but it's now confirmed like the what with hopper just cutting the, the demogorgon in, in pieces after that so yeah but yeah so you're right you're right about that it makes it a little weird if we if we kick off right when season four ended Hopper's gonna be coming to the rescue, and people are gonna be freaking the fuck out. Yeah, they're like, "Where the yeah. fuck do you come from? Hell, <laughs> you know something like they, they think like hell opened up, you know? Yeah, that'll be that'll be weird. Like for me, yeah, is Max dead? Like, is her spirit just gone? You know, is that gonna be a major point where because when Elle's going to try to find her, it's blank, like there's nothing there. So much like, did like she, her mom. Did she save her body, but her mind is gone? Yeah. Or is her mind kind of like trapped? Is her mind trapped in like Vecna's, you know, prison? I think I think Vecna is whatever happened to Vecna is coming into play with Max. Like that's what's gonna have. They're gonna have to unlock Max to get Vecna, to get to Vecna in season five. That's my thought. That makes sense. 
Because yeah. there's got to be some hook into a final confrontation with him. Yeah. As a character. So they got to tie we, that off. And we still have numbered, numbered, uh, numbered kids out there in the world that are out hiding or living their lives. So we, we just we have to circle back to that. There has to be an ultimate battle of some sort, right? With these kids. They yeah. can't just be L. Yeah, like there's... Does the military, like, you know, go come after the kids in Hawkins and everything and try to freak everything out? And then is the reinforcements Owens and all the kids he could find? Yeah. You know, that'd be that'd be pretty cool to see, like him coming in on a helicopter and all the kids are with him and everything. That'd be interesting. I don't know how many there would be left after the what we see in season four. No. Guy killed a lot of people. Vecna killed a lot of the kids. Yeah. So how many of them are alive? That'll be... Of course, there's it was eight, right? That was in season two. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Obviously, yeah, we know of eight, and maybe there's more. Who knows? Maybe but there's more after eleven. We just know that at that point, we know that because of the flashbacks in the first half, eleven was the last of them, wasn't she? I think so. Or, because there were younger kids, but their numbers were higher than L. Maybe I can't I remember. remember. Okay. So it's possible there are other numbers out there that 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 were in the facility, and then when she cracked open in the first season, uh, in, and they they got out too, or you know there could be there there's more than at, at least at least eight's out there. We know that mm -hmm. at least eight. Yep. So yeah, like I'm just trying to think anything else. I mean, Steve surviving, yes, because I don't think his story is done yet because he's like the redeemed hero of the story, kind of like Hopper, yep. I guess, in a sense. Because like Hopper was like not treated as like you know like a savior kind of character in the first season. He kind of works his way back into being a good guy. It's bad, but then he has that turn where he turns Eleven in to save Will. You know, so he's got you know, and then he redeems himself for that in season two. You know, with taking her in. Um, Steve, kind of the same thing. He's an asshole in season one, and then turns out to be a good guy by the end. Uh, and yeah, I think, I think they actually left themselves. I'm not a huge fan of doing like overly hackney like romance stuff, but the actual relationship between him and Nancy was pretty interesting to see develop. Obviously, the stuff with Robin was her love interest is kind of like off screen all the time, right? So we don't really see that. But so clearly, they're open to exploring, you know, you know, a different like a non-straight character. So I don't think the stuff with Will is like, they need to hold up a sign that says Will is gay. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way to do that in the story that's not, oh, that's pandering. Like, you kind of have to leave it in the subtext, but just make it really obvious. And I think they did. You know, it's very okay. obvious in the van. Like, yeah, Will's gay. Like, the fact that yeah, everyone yeah. is speculating it to me says the subtext is obvious enough, guys. It's okay to have it be subtext because subtext is what makes life life people don't just say shit like i'm gay to everyone well, it's also it's also the 80s exactly which is a very it's different the 80s. now the only thing is it's not about it's not about the framing for me it's more of the fact that i think people i what i think people are wanting like just put it out there is he gay or not is because of the whole thing the fawning over uh over mike I think that was the kind of the thing in the first part, there was this kind of like a weird fawning that he was doing. And so it's like, okay, are we, are we really going there? Okay. Well let's, let's, is he going to confess his love to Mike or not? And he never did obviously, but I think that's what the people were saying. Like if he's gay, okay, that's fine. You, you don't have to frame it to where it's like holding up a sign or wearing a, you know, a rainbow shirt or anything like that. Just more of this, like telling, telling, you know, Mike that he has, but also in the story, him. like he knows his friends in love with another friend. That's that's fair. Like he knows that they're friend. They're all friends with each and other. And it's his it is his it's his adopted sister. Yeah, you know, exactly. So. Like yeah, he's in a position where like saying that it can't lead to anything good. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's probably that's what I would assume the character's thinking. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I'm I'm sure the Duffer brothers in an interview down the road will bring up that what your point was that look, you know, it, we just can't, we can't make it so black and white because of the period it was in culturally, like society was and how people were raised and they thought everything. Like obviously, you either just you know moved out to San Francisco or the boroughs of New York and party the gay life, and you still would come home to the Midwest and be 
what your parents wanted you to be at that time period, you know? Like, it could be something like that, whatever. It's fair. It's fair. I think for me, though, I was expecting a little... Just based off of the comments, I was expecting a little more than that. I'm not expecting them to just say, like, Will saying, I'm gay, or I like boys, or anything like that. It's just I figured that they were going to push it a little farther. And I think for me, it just felt like, okay, it stuttered, stopped, and then it, there was one part... In the, in the van, and then one part with his brother, and that was really it. I'm like, okay, all right. But I, I really, I will say this. I'm a little disappointed just because Will and Jonathan, I really feel like overall they didn't have a big impactful part of this season. And obviously we're doing something with Will with the nosebleed at the end. Oh, yeah, he's season, tied in. Yeah, season. he's tied in yeah. too back now. He's, so obviously we circle back to Will's importance, and that's fine, but I really think that they did the Jonathan character a disservice because I think in the first two seasons he played a pivotal role in the show, and then he was just kind of lost this season. And maybe there's maybe there's something there artistically, like there's a reason why, I don't know, but I felt like Jonathan was really pulled away from the plot for a major part of the season, you know? Yeah, well, I think but, they could be setting him up to, you know, because like, all the shit his family's been through, right? And, like, it could have, like, broken him, basically. Possible. You know? And then, of course, there's the dynamic between him and Nancy and then Nancy and Steve that's going to play in Season 5 because he wasn't around for everything that happened in Season 4. Missed a lot of stuff. You know, I mean, if I'm Nancy, Steve's Steve's pretty awesome this season. Yeah. You know, he kicked a lot of ass. He 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 stepped He stepped up and saved a lot of people. Didn't get beat up. His face was fine. This I mean, season. he got chewed up by bats, but well, he, he got chewed up. He took it like a champ, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then he still came out and tried to take on Vecna, and you know, made the Molotov cocktails and everything. And his friendship with Robin is great. I really enjoy oh, Robin's character as yeah. the comic relief of their of their like kind of pod of people. Because you got like Dustin in yeah. in the in the OG kids group. You got Robin in the older kids group, right? I mean, obviously Murray in Marty, the adult. Yeah, Murray, Murray, Murray in the adult Murray. group. But they have really good, like, kind of sarcastic timing amongst all of them, really. They yeah. got that kind of dry humor between them all. And, like, she's that, that perfect character for that. Of course, R.I.P. Eddie. That sucks. Yeah. But somebody had to die. And it's probably going to be going into the final season. Who's going to die? Oh, probably the guy we met this season. Yeah. That, that, that tracks. That makes the most sense. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm, I'm very much so looking forward to season five. I'm curious. How, how far are they going to stretch this this time? Are they going to do any time jumps? Like, obviously, with the production, with the pauses they had to do due to COVID and everything, you can't stop the kids getting older. No. You know, it's you know it's easier to work around, you know, adults because they're, well, they're adults. Like, unless they're starting to really show their age, like, you can really finesse that. You got a lot more wiggle room there. Like, yeah. are the kids supposed to still be 14 next year when the kids playing them are 20 in their 20s? Like about to be, I think. They're all, yeah, they're all between the ages of like 19 and 21. Right, like eventually that's going to start to strain sense yeah. because the show, for it's only being around four seasons, it's been in production for like... Was seven it? years. Yeah, seven or eight years. Yeah. You know, like that's a long time to not also have that amount of time in your story. Because in the story, it's only been three years? Three years. Three They've years. Established three years. Exactly, and the kids have gotten eight years older. <laughs> Eventually, that's going to start to break the world you've built if you don't build in a fix for that. And yeah. who knows? Maybe they'll tell a one-episode story, button it off, flash and then do a time jump. Yeah, that's I could possible. certainly see that. And then, like, or a split season, maybe, where it's, like, the first half, tie it off, and then the back half is you kind of, like, uh, make it like a Stephen King, like, we have to go back like it chapter two yeah where they got to go back i could see that that would make a lot of sense and it would fit in with a lot of the themes of their stories that they that they have created in this world being so pretty pulled from that 80s stephen king kind of you know story structure with the kids and this you know mystical unknowable world that they're a part of so That'll be that'll be an interesting thing to see as season five develops and they share more about the release schedule and what it's going to look like for the final release. Clearly, this, the broken season helped Netflix because season four of the finale b- turned like broke Bro- Netflix, like the servers broke. 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 Like yep. they could not handle the traffic. So I have a feeling Netflix is going to push for some kind of split season finale like that because clearly it did, it did well for their numbers. So I could see them doing a mid like a mid season time jump. 
which would make some sense for me. Yeah, you know, I, I think, yeah, you, you, you touch on something, then something popped in my head when you're talking about the time jump. That first episode, let's say you do one episode to do a time jump uh, after that, which would be artistically, I think, I would tell, like, story-wise, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I think from a cinematic standpoint, fans, like, people, the average moviegoer really wouldn't like that after just one episode. Maybe do it in the middle, like, do a season, half a season arc, and then do the final, like, the final mm-hmm. half as a as a different, like, a five Yeah, like a, like a 5.5. Yeah. I think, though, I'm going to go ahead and call it now. The death of Hawkins that you saw at the end of season four... The emanating source is going to be at the hospital and Max. I'm calling it. That's what's okay. going to be. So at the beginning of this season, whatever, like, and that actually makes sense. Like, we have an arc that figures out what's happening with Max, and then after that, we flash forward. Like, maybe Max does die at the midseason, and then all of a sudden, this death that's expanding out of out of the center of Hawkins stops. Right, but then we have to we flash forward and like everyone's moved on with their lives and they're in college or whatever you know and something happens that re-erupts hawkins you know maybe, maybe maybe max wakes up maybe Matt. well that's what i mean like not necessarily like she gets like let's say the season and the half season ends with her being pulled into the upside down or something right they're trying to fight whatever it is with her in the at the hospital and then the season the mid-season finale is she gets pulled into the upside down and that's they're like, okay, she's gone, and L can't open it up anymore. Something happens, or you know, something like that, and then, then we have to flash forward, and there's obviously something going on once again at Hawkins. You know, the fact that it's the final battle for Hawkins, and you have the half season of you know, four years later or something. But it does. It, you, you do pose a really good point in that you can't have these twenty year olds pretend playing fourteen year olds. You know, at the start of next season, and it look like. Like it's it'd be believable for for long, you know. I don't know if you've seen Millie Bobby Brown lately, but she no longer even looks like an eighteen. She's dressing and uh, look like her. She's doing interviews. She looks like she's thirty years old now, and they're gonna have to basically make her down to look younger. You know, like I said, the guys. Yeah, because the, the all, show you know. was made like they filmed most of this in twenty twenty. Yep. So by the time they get around to filming the next thing, it'll have been three years, give yep. or take. Yeah. So. so. Yeah, like that that will that will probably impact the story a little bit. Yeah. How much that impacts it, obviously to be determined. Which is yeah. why we watch shows, because we don't know what's gonna happen. No, no. And but you know, this is the final season. The Duffer Brothers are gonna make sure that they, 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 they do their best to hit a home run for this season. And I think season four, I have seen very few people, even the even the edge lords haven't really come out to complain too much about season four. Yeah, because it's, there's not a. I think it's very clearly the second best season of the show. Season one, yeah. I mean that that shit was a cultural phenomenon like nothing I've oh, seen yeah. from from a non-established IP. Not like the closest thing, which I'll bring up to later with Star Trek: Strange and Worlds. Closest like a breakout hit like I've that that I've seen like that would be like a Ted Lasso. Yeah, like just out of nowhere, people thought it'd be good because it looked good, like it looked polished and like well done. Yeah, and it looked, you know, very eighty Stephen King, and then it became this just huge fucking hit, and, and the kids are like giving out sandwiches at the like the Oscars and shit, and like it was yeah. everywhere, right? Like, and then Ted Lasso season one, same thing. Oh, it looks all right. Jake and Sudeikis is doing a comedy. Looks all right. Looks well done. Holy shit, it's amazing, yeah. right? And then it just explodes from there, right? And then seasons two and three had their drawbacks, had their criticisms. I think season four is definitely the strongest season since the first. I think two and three are both equally just good seasons. Like there's nothing bad yeah. about them, but there's a, just a, a kind of cultural fever pitch around the first and now this, the fourth. And part of that is because it's been gone for so long, I think because everybody knew about the, you know, COVID production shutdowns and, and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, Netflix is in trouble. Right. And then, Oh shit, here comes stranger things to actually literally save their day. Yeah, you know, and like stave off all the bullshit. Nobody's talking about Netflix being in the tank anymore. That's not happening there, because this show was why, that yeah. big a hit. Yeah, there's a reason why they gave the Duffer Brothers a hundred million dollars. They know that they they, know. those dudes are making a money. Yep, yep. So I'm very I curious do. to see what projects the Duffer Brothers are working on next, and like what actually they put into production, not just what gets rumored about them working on. Like I'm really curious about, or does somebody get them away from Netflix? You know what I mean? Like, that'll be interesting because you got to imagine Disney's like, man, we need some shit too. You know, like that kind of stuff. 
but then Amazon's like, we have Amazon money. Exactly. And we like, have, and we're, we're unrated. Look at the boys. And, and like, they're like, yeah. and they're going to be, they could, you know, pitch the, like the Duffer brothers are like almost, I would say kind of sought after commodities, like the Russo brothers. Yeah. You know, like they've made straight bangers and haven't pulled a, you know, I'm trying to think of a, like every, what, what remember what everybody thought about uh, the Game of Thrones showrunners through like the first five seasons? Oh, they're going to do this new HBO show. Oh, they're going to work on Star Wars. They're going to do all these amazing things. And then the show shit the bed. Yeah. The Duffer Brothers stuff's not doing that, right? Like it's still hitting and going to probably finish just as strong. So they're not going to have that bad taste in the mouth kind of putting a damper on their projects like the Game of Thrones guys. So I'm curious what they do next. And that's definitely something I'm going to check out. Same with the Russo brothers. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to watch whatever they, they're working on. In fact, I don't think since... In, I think Infinity, since Infinity War, I didn't watch... Is it Cherry? That was the one with Tom Holland. I never watched yep. that just because it didn't look appealing to me like the subject matter didn't. But everyone said it was actually a solid movie. So like, they still haven't like produced a shitty thing which is kind of crazy to think about yeah man it really is so excited about man season five i really yeah. am and hopefully we hopefully we start getting production details pretty soon i mean it took a few months for us to hear about ted lasso's production uh start dates and stuff so uh i don't think it's going to be a two-year wait though i think that they're going to start production here very very soon yeah i would imagine like fall netflix is yeah, I I don't see next I don't see Netflix holding out for another two years. They're like, you get this done, we want it next. Like we this September we've got Cobra Kai. Ne next September we want Stranger Things, the final season. Yeah, you got to capitalize off the momentum. Whatever money you need anchor. to get everybody in to do this thing, let's go. Yep. yep exactly. So, all right. Oh man, let's jump into the boys. Let's do this. Heck yeah, man. we'll stick with uh, streaming shows for now before we get yes. into Thor: Love and Thunder. So the boys finale wrapped up on Friday for season three. The big showdown between Homelander and Soldier Boy and Butcher and our, you know, lovable crew of characters that are in the boys. Uh, what did you think of the finale? Man, Kripke has given us something incredible here. And I know a lot of people didn't like this season because they thought it didn't have the <laughs> the 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 momentum of season one and two. My thought is is that I think those people really didn't really understand the boys itself. And of course, the biggest complaint people are having now is it's getting way too current politically. Like a lot of current politics are being told in the narrative in, in this season. When I tell them, it's always been there. If you go back and watch season one and two, the politics have been in there. It's nothing new, right? Um, I really loved uh, Carl Urban's just fantastic. You know, he really is mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, I was very surprised that they decided to kill. Black more, yeah. Such a quick, yeah. I, I, as soon as I was like, "Ooh, Fusion's not gonna like that." Yeah, the thing was, it was like, first off, this episode before we finally get a little bit more on Black Noir that the, the brain injury he suffered, like, made him a little fucking weirdo. Okay, well, this is the first time we're seeing him be that kind of weird, right? Like, we've always seen him kind of just hanging out, snacking playing, like, writing on a reading or whatever, like, it's just random quiet shit. But this was, like, a whole new level of him being weird with the, the imaginary characters, cartoon characters and all that. But then, like, I'm like, okay, I'm thinking, are we really going to go somewhere? Is Black Noir going to snap and, like, whip his ass? Nope. He goes to help out, and Homelander just kills him, just punches a hole right through him, and that's really it. Yeah, I was a little pissed about that. Not going to lie. I was like, okay, did... I didn't give. I don't give a shit if it's the same. I, it, we obviously knew it was a deviated character from the comic books. He wasn't a clone of Homelander. That's fine. But in that same episode, we get a reveal like that Homelander is uh, Soldier Boy's genetic son, right? All, so there's, there's okay. We're we're completely deviating. I don't care as long as you tell a great story. And the whole death of Black Noir just felt like really empty to me. I felt like he was going to play a big part, but I understand why they did it was because. Black Noir was a lingering thread for Homelander if we didn't resolve it, but we wanted to jump back to Maeve. That was their deal. For them, it was about it was about Queen Maeve being the big deal for this season, like the Dark Horse character to get redemption, not Black War Noir. Definitely not the Deep. Like that whole story with the Deep is just it's getting funnier and weirder. I don't know. Um, A Train. I'm very curious where they're gonna go with A Train. I really am. Like it's just 
I felt a little awkward with that with with his his story this season. But um, man, I I really I kind of know where they're going now because we thought that maybe next season would be the final season. How they were going to paint it up where either Homelander just goes fucking crazy and tries to take over the world and they have to save it. The way this is set up is we're at least getting two more seasons, at least two more, because. You know, she's running for vice president. She's running for the presidency, right? Vice presidency and pregnant to kill him when she when he when yeah. they when he wins. Yeah. Blow his head blow his head up and then she takes over, right? Yeah. That way she looks like the hero. Yeah. Um so obviously we're gonna get two seasons out of out of at least two more. At least two more. I don't think that they're gonna I have a counterpoint there. Okay, go ahead. I wanna hear it. I think that's like a mid season deal with her problem and then Maybe not even the back half. Maybe it's only two episodes or something where Homelander snaps and... Because I don't know how you budget-wise show him essentially trying to take over the world. Yeah, it's a pretty high You know, like, that's a lot. Now, him showing yeah. using the White House set that you're going to build for the Victoria Newman story and having yeah. everything center around that, a lot more feasible. Okay. So maybe you have episode six, she bites it, Homelander snaps, it's him versus the boys. Full on, full stop. And that's that's your end game. Okay. I that's could fair. I could see that happening in an eight episode structure. Yeah, because she screwed him at the end of this season. So he's got that he's got that vendetta for for, for her. Well he not and, not Homelander. Not Homelander. Yeah, wait. No, she showed she's the one that told him where uh, Ryan was. That's true. That's true. I forgot about that little But like there. I think that's what they're they're gonna have a, a this weird connection in season four. Yeah. And then when when Butcher kills her. That's when everything kicks off and he fully snaps. Okay. Okay. Or maybe well, he obviously... accidentally kills Ryan or something. Like maybe she well, accidentally yeah, kills yeah. Ryan. It was Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe she does like try to attack Homelander with this like broad, powerful attack, but Homelander survives because he's stronger. Maybe Ryan doesn't. Because he's smaller and weaker. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe because the, 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 the stinger on this season is Ryan like seemingly taking pleasure in someone dying. Yeah, maybe the boys get maybe she realizes, oh, shit, I just made a second Homelander. Oh, fuck. And maybe she tries to try to help the boys. You know, maybe they have that turn where she also helps the boys. Plus, there's that psycho character from season two that left the mental hospital who can like implode about, shit. Yes, we forgot all about her. Like she maybe she's coming back into the board because I'll say this for Kripke. He doesn't leave pieces like that generally hanging on the board and do nothing with them. Like a lot of main, you know, characters that you thought maybe one offs in the in the OG Supernatural run turned out to be much bigger pieces down the road. Like, look at the Archangel Gabriel. Yep. Was, he was introduced as this one off weird trickster character who could make these illusions. Oh no, he's a fucking Archangel. And it's apocalypse time. So of course he has a bigger role to play, right? I have a feeling that character is gonna show up, and maybe she's the one that takes out Newman, because it's kind of a similar power structure. You know, it's yeah. all mental, you know exploding heads imploding heads you know like going head to head that sounds pretty cool actually um yeah uh yeah i I thought about i thought that went through that just rolled off your tongue there with that pun dude head to head like just rolled off it works it was organic yeah it works um Um, yeah good call there i I totally forgot about her i you you've brought her up a few times when we've talked about the boys and i keep forgetting about her obvious Obvious. like her walking somewhere like that yeah. to me implies we'll see her down the road. And we haven't seen her yet. So season four? Because they still got Soldier Boy on ice. But I don't know if that's a thread they'll ever pick up again. You know what I mean? Like I could see Grace keeping him off off the board permanently and we just don't talk about Soldier Boy again. Right? Because yeah. it's kind of just like, I'm not going back. He loses and he's back in the box. And I don't know if we ever go back to him. Cause I don't know if they would, if they would even want to bring him out knowing how fucking crazy he went, you know? I don't think, I don't think, um, I don't think soldier boy in terms of like being out of a coma and being, uh, a resource would be a real thing. My take is, I think that they do some testing and yeah, they figure out how his like, powers work. I think either they, they extract his powers for use or they turn him just Kripke making kind of a nod to another comic book world, turn him into some type of doomsday type of monster. Yeah. Just so like everybody, like the, the, the heroes that are actually good 
that are like I, I we're probably going to see next year like you said if we go the route where Newman and, and or Homelander decide to go complete and total like global dictator um you obviously obviously going to see the boys themselves expand and add a few more powers that help them right that's obviously going to be needed because then whoever it is that takes over the planet is going to have heroes that end up becoming their 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 soldiers in this new regime this whole world thing right so the boys are going to need resources as well you know? and that's where a train comes in i think so, i think a train's yeah. going to defect because like the whole how could you kill one of your own kind thing like he's like uh, like insulted that homelander doesn't understand that blue hawk paralyzed his brother yeah you yeah. know and like he he wants to do something but his brother doesn't want anything to do with him so i think he's gonna seek out annie and like try to help in season four fair so i think that's where he goes you know and the deep is probably gonna die i, I would assume he homelander snaps and kills him or something you know he doesn't seem like a character that has cool. anything more to do yeah because you can only play the snobbling weasley character for you know so long yep. before you have no more purpose in the story. So I don't know I where think, he yeah, goes. When 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 uh, when Homelander took over Vaught and he put him in he- ahead of security, it really felt like okay, we've kind of we've we've met our we've gone full circle with the Deep's character, and he's not getting redemption at all. Also, and it's like what if Black Noir? Maybe he like can he heal? I don't know how do his powers work. Because well, like Emiko would hundred percent come back from that. She wouldn't be dead. Yeah. Did, are they, do their powers work similarly? I don't know. Uh, it's I doubt it because he's still playing. fucked up in the head. Yeah. Well, he lost part of his brain. Yeah. When, uh, when he fought Soldier Boy, he like he completely, but he he recovered from it, but he suffered brain damage. So maybe it's possible he recovers and we get like some type of like cybernetics in him or something. I don't know. Because like, Stan Edgar's still around. Maybe Edgar like gets his body and like brings him back to life or something. Yeah. I don't know. Because the Edgar Is, Edgar's still he's got beat but does he show up to help the boys take down homelander yeah because edgar edgar's knows where all the skeletons are buried in vaught he knows everything he knows all the secrets of vaught that homelander does too because homelander broke into everything and did all this research so homelander's obviously going to unlock the cages to help him win in season four right but Stan Edgar also knows where some of the skeletons are buried and can help the boys significantly with that. It's a very good point. Like I was thinking about that earlier about Stan Edgar and like he just wants. It's wants obvious. Whole, obviously, he would yeah. know Grace. Like does yep, he show up exactly. to like to Grace and then that's the introduction to the boys. Yeah. He knows. He knows Carl Urban's. He knows Billy Butcher. They've met a few times. And that's a good, good. Good point. Yeah, like that would be a fun dynamic to have him in that group for a season or even just an episode. And next season is going to be interesting because depending on where they pick up time wise, uh, Billy only has a roughly 18 months to live with mm-hmm. the lesions. So are we going to be like running on short time? Like, are we going to be on a timer well, next season? I think they got to be because if, if they're campaigning, the election is not that soon. Like okay. It's at least going to be six months for before an yep. election. Cause you would pick your VP on the ticket roughly just before the convention. So you're talking June of the election year. So six months, five to six months to the actual election, a good eight to nine months to actually get inaugurated. So it'll probably be set in the winter. Um, You know, we're talking February because they haven't really done anything winter in New York. They yeah. did a little bit in season one, I think. Where it was just like cold, like in the fall, but it was never like snowy and all that stuff. It was never snowy. They never like fully outlined yeah. it as being So I could see them doing a, you know, winter kind of setting for New York. Um, and then it would be, you're thinking like January, February, State of the Union. Maybe it's the State of the Union where the, everything goes down, which would be which would be in February of a year, give or take. So maybe, maybe the whole season four is about the run up to the election. And then. The election happens in the penultimate episode, and then we fast forward the final episode. Certainly, to yeah. the, to, to the uh, inauguration or whatever. And then that, like yeah. the the end, is her killing the president, and becoming president with Homelander taking over. Yeah. Like if they do a two two episode, like two part, like for the run up to the election, Homelander taking over, and then season five, that final confrontation, it'd yeah. probably be a finale thing, like with the you know everything with Newman and all that. If they do it all in one season, where I'm thinking, yeah, five episode five or six. Something crazy shit happens. The back three, back two episodes, 
Homelander trying to be the dictator. Yeah. Yeah, that that's how I see the structure breaking out. Yeah. No, I it I, I it makes sense to go that route, that whole bright burn approach, and then obviously the kid is gonna have to play a part whether he goes crazy or he does die and become motivation for Homelander to completely snap. Because mm-hmm. We've established now that he's now bonding to Homelander, and Homelander is wanting to bond to him completely. Not just in terms of the the selfish, like he's my son, to to spite the wife, uh, to spite the woman, to spite his mom. Uh, he's now like, I want to be his dad. Like I love him, and I want to be his dad. Like I never had a dad, so like, and then all, you know, he had to. His own dad wanted to kill him. His own biological father wanted to kill him. So. Yeah, there's a, there's just, uh, what's funny is that we've spent 15 minutes talking about it. We have not once pulled out any type of commentary on anything in terms of like the political commentary from the show. And that's, that just shows you like how I think people are really focused, like kind of focusing way too much on one thing and not really looking at the whole picture. Yeah, because that's just backdrop to the, to the world. It's more like, and it's more side comments than anything. It's yeah, not like it's just, it doesn't carry the plot. Like, oh, we're going to talk about you know storming capitals or gun laws or anything like that. Like, it does come up like with the the the, um, the gunpowder episode. Yeah, it's fucking a- hilarious. It's allegorical. Yeah, like it, it really is without being browbeating. Yeah, you know, like because it's it's not a forefront thing, you know. No. Like obviously but, now this last episode we had the you know kind of January sixth allegory. Yep. Right. But like, it was really just a point that, oh yeah, this dude's gonna be is a fascist asshole. Like, yep. it, it, that's not a shock. That's not a revelation. We knew yep. that, and they were just using that to, you know, to bring it and make it, you know, into sharper focus. Yeah. Like, no, nothing wrong with that. Anybody that's got a problem with it is not paying attention to what's going on in the real world. So don't pay attention to them. Exactly. Um, question for you, Billy Butcher. Is he going to be dead by the end of season four? Depends. If they do a fifth season, I don't know. If they do it all in this season, I think he dies at the end. My theory is they're going to do a fifth and final season. By the end of season four, Billy Butcher is going to take Compound V. And like try to stave off death? To stave off death and just to kind of permanently put him in a place to be able to fight Homelander. Like my thought is maybe Ryan gets killed in a ba- in a in a conflict between Newman and Homelander, and Homelander snaps because of it. But Billy Butcher's pissed. Like this is it. Like he took my wife. He took her son. I've had enough of this shit. Like and I'm dying. I've been playing for this whole season, this whole time. That kind of like let's do it, but kind of la- lazily trying to 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 put an end to this whole thing. But at this point. I'm going to inject Compound V, get powers permanently. It'll help me stay, live live longer. But I want to be the one to fucking kill Homelander myself. Like I don't. I want to be the one to deal the death blow. I have a theory. If they use, if they can utilize Soldier Boy's power without waking him up, that yeah. he would kill Homelander and then let Grace kill him. Okay. You know, yeah. I kind of go out like on his own terms. Like I'm done. I shouldn't have this power. Nobody should. And that's the point. And then Grace kills him, something okay. like that. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I could because, I could see yeah. that. Well, we saw that with Lamplight. Lamplight was one of those guys where, like, you turned out he was a piece of shit, but then his thing at the end was somewhat redemptive in that, like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I hate, I hate myself, you know. And you, like you said, we're seeing that more and more with A Train. So obviously, we're going to get just like with Maeve this season. We're going to he get would a be the one to break and get them more Compound V. Yep, because he's got exactly. super speed. Yep, and we haven't seen the we haven't seen the last of Queen Maeve. We haven't. I don't seen think the last so either. Maeve. I think she comes mm-hmm. back in a big way. Does she take yeah. V again, or does she just like have be a be a, a shoulder to like uh, an ear for Star for Starlight? Yeah, you know I could see that for sure. Yeah, I like a mentor, like you know, kind of a mentor. I could see that as well because obviously we're gonna get a different Starlight. She's gonna be vigilante mode. So which yeah, is she's be with cool. the boys, which is gonna be fun. Yeah. Like yeah, her yeah. like. You know, because in season two, where she was paired off with Butcher for a few episodes, that was really fun. Like they it had was great, fun. they had gr- a great dynamic, and yes. I really am curious to see where they go with her in season four, because her working full time with the boys is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, because every time she's gotten to play with that group, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah, and Kimiko love. I love the actress that plays her. I think she does a great job. Um, I was surprised a- they didn't mm-hmm. go any more further with her voice. 
You t- that's yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Like I thought when she was going to get a reinjection of Compound V, maybe she gets her voice back, or, or something. maybe that was the trade off. Like oh, now she can't talk again. Well, after after her powers are gone, she her voice starts coming back, and then she has to lose it. Yeah. If it, the only complaint I had about Kamiko this season was her existential crisis only lasted like what two episodes, like an episode and a half. Was yeah. really where she was like her I'm done arc doing felt this. like it would have been a better fit in maybe like a ten episode. Yeah, but they certainly gave it a, a good enough impetus to get the get the power back. With whole, hey, you were strapped onto a chair while your boyfriend was tortured in front of you. Yeah, that's right. True. Like that's a pretty strong motivation. Yeah, you know, I don't yeah. have any qualms with that. It just felt, oh, that was fast. Yeah, but again, it it makes sense. So even if it was rushed, it it's a story beat that makes sense. And we can talk about rushed story beats when we get to Thor: Love and Thunder. Because oh man, yeah. do I have thoughts. All right, man. So let's wrap up the boys. I'm. Su- I thought it was an excellent season four. I know it may not have been as kind of balls to the wall season one, but they never. They very rarely are. Um, but it does set up a lot of good storylines for season for the next. Well, season. that in the first season is all about establishing the world and the shock of what this world is compared to other properties in the in the genre. And so, it, like you just, it was so shocking for people. They were they were used to their superheroes. And they were like, mm-hmm. "This isn't what that's about. This is a visceral reality like, of what." Superheroes can you be. imagine how bonkers Herogasm would have been in season one? I will say, I was disappointed with the Herogasm episode. A I understand bit. that, but I also understand that we're now living in this world. We understand it. It's not a shock anymore. In the comics, Herogasm was like a big, yeah, almost like the the Omni Man reveal in Invincible. It was a big shock moment for yeah. the audience. Yep. We don't need that shock anymore. Our, our premiere That's in true. season three has a guy inside of someone else's penis. Like That's true. We started off the first five minutes with it. Yeah, yeah. Like right. that was the opening to the season. We don't need Hero Gasm to be this insane thing to like show us what the world is. We know how fucked up it is. Yeah. It was still pretty fucked up. You know, they used it to still provide commentary on, yeah, dude, power has made these people fucking crazy. They're assholes. Yeah. They're the worst. I love the side, the care, the, the 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 standing joke about Frenchie missing Herogasm. That was Great. kind of funny. That was a fun little character beat, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it was treated more as a just a story beat instead of the the linchpin of a thing, you know. Yeah. Which I appreciated and I understood. Yeah, I think it fit into the story well enough. I think that was just a case of I almost think they hyped it up too much. They did a little bit. Yeah. If they hadn't hyped it up so much, yeah. I don't think anybody would have been. Oh, it wasn't what I expected. Yeah, I think it was just a case of misset expectations. Because if you didn't know it was Herogasm, like if you were not paying attention to the marketing, and yeah. you came in as a blind fan, like most of the audience is, I I don't think you'd care, right? Like it's it's just a cool story, like an interesting story about this world and an experience in it, versus the hardcore comic fans and the people that are really tuned into like Kripke's Twitter and stuff. Like, oh, we expected crazy shit. We yeah. didn't really get that much. But that's a really small subset of the audience compared to who's all watching this show. That's fair. Yeah. I think that's one of those well, moments where fans need to step back and go, okay, not everyone's start course us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I admit I was being a little, I was being a fanboy when and, I said I and was a little disappointed. It's totally fair. Like they did set that expectation for those people yeah. that are that clued in. Yep. Like that was, I think, a failure on the marketing slash hype, you know, train from yeah. them. Of they they kind of overbuilt it. Yeah. They marketed it two years ago that Herogasm is going to be in this season. We are going to shoot Herogasm. Like they gave us a run by run listing of like getting this episode ready. So I, I mean, I'm part of, I'm, I'm partially responsible because I was out there pumping it out on social media. Like Herogasm was one of the more fucked up comics in the series and just in comic books in general. And they're going to do an episode of it. It's coming out in a couple months. It's coming out tomorrow. And then my response was, Okay, it happened, but you know the episode wasn't bad. But it just for me, I guess, like I said, as a fanboy, was like oh, maybe I did have unrealistic expectations, just slightly, mm-hmm. a bit, a bit. It happens. Yeah. So let's wrap this up with Thor, man. Let's do this. Oh, speaking of, before, as a tie into Strange New Worlds, yeah. which is the at the end, uh, I want Carl Urban to get killed off so he can go show up as Bones in Strange New Worlds. Okay, just say fuck it, cast a Kelvin timeline actor because his Bones was amazing. And his bones would be dope as fuck on this cast. Are you shitting me? Him and him and Anson Mount would have so much fun on the screen. It'd be amazing. Because that guy's got Mount has charisma coming out of his ass versus Carl Urban with his, you know, sarcastic, you know, 
uh, his his bones. Oh, yeah. that shit would fucking like explode. It'd be incredible. Huh. Okay, we're wrapping up the boys. We're gonna talk about Thor: Love and Thunder. It's the fourth standalone yeah. Thor movie. So, what was your takeaway, Mister Fusion? If I had to give it a score out of one hundred, I would give it roughly somewhere between a sixty-five and a seventy. So, if it were a college exam, it would be a passing score. It was. It had a lot of fun moments. But I was a little, I was waiting a little bit more for a few things. Like, this is one of those shorter Marvel movies at just a tad under two hours. It realistically probably should have been two and a half hours because I felt there was some character development missing. I needed a little more character development, particularly with Jane here. And I felt like we needed a little bit more with her and we could have had a little bit more time with her, especially with the way it, you know, the way her, her character, uh, met her finale through the the MCU here. I thought that we could have had a little bit more time with her. Um, the jokes were good, but I think we went way overboard with it being... It It was... The first movie was a lighthearted superhero movie, and it worked, right? Whereas this one really felt like we were trying to go full Caddyshack with this. Like, we were going completely, like, just wacky. And there were some moments where it was a little too much, but there were moments that the jokes were like the, the, the screaming goats, fucking hilarious. I just every time they were screaming, I couldn't stop laughing. I don't know why, but um, yeah. There, but overall, man, I enjoyed large stretches of it. It went by really fast. I get why the Guardians were just at the beginning. I was cool with that. Um, I think that there should have been a little bit more. T- I mean, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I really felt like they, there should have been some tie-in a little bit more to Earth outside of just when Jane was there and and um, and the uh, the two scenes with uh, New Asgard. So yeah, but yeah, it was it was an okay film, man. It wasn't great, but it wasn't it wasn't bad. It wasn't Dark World, thankfully. You know? No, yeah, I I agree. Uh, I think Ragnarok was a significantly better movie. Yeah. It was more I think Ragnarok was a better paced movie for the story they were telling. Yep. Because they gave the emotional beats enough time to really hit, you know, like Thor coming to terms with everything that has happened and you know, like him coming to terms with losing the hammer and rediscovering his power, like all those moments have enough time to like really come to the forefront of the story mm-hmm. and like give the movie a lot of heart instead of just the comedy. Whereas Thor Love and Thunder was like waited way too much on the comedy way too much yeah and so this is one of those movies where I, when chris tells me it tells us he doesn't like it i understand why like the the beats that would have been the most impactful rush by in a fucking hurry because they got to get to that credit scene you know yeah. like what i posited the other day on a reddit thread was this was a movie that i 100 percent shit this would have been a great two-parter like, yeah. imagine the the cliffhanger where they you know they face off with Zeus and you know omnipotent city and all that, and then they take down like they like fuck it. I guess we'll go fight Gore with the Thunderbolt, and then they lose. He has Stormbreaker, and then that's the first time the audience and Thor sees Jane's cancer, and then that's the and like he realizes that she's dying. Stormbreaker is going to like you know he and he puts in Thor Stormbreaker to go to eternity, you know, like that would have been an amazing cliffhanger. And then part two would have been follow up more with Jane, Hercules coming to Earth, and then realizing that oh no Thor's not a bad guy like, and he looks around and he see all these people who are like ready to fight for Thor, and like he's never seen that as a god of like people willing to stand up for them. You know, and then have that moment of like, oh, I guess you didn't really kill my dad and he is an asshole, so fuck it. I guess I'll help, you know, and like actually give some character growth there with him because you're not doing the Jason Taylor. You're not bringing in multiple Thors. Yeah. You know, like like Thor Odin's sons. Like there was the young, the current and the future uh, King of Asgard. Yep. So like that part of the story was completely shuffled off. Like it felt like they took the guts of the, that mighty Thor story with none of the heart of the actual Jason Taylor run, which was yep. the big problem here, I think for me. And then again, you get more time for Jane to sit with her, you know, her impending death. And then you pair her off with Sif and Valkyrie recovering. And then them talking and having that bonding moment with, in the new Asgard, you know, whatever it is, clinic or whatever. 
And then that's when she decides to go save Thor. I think that would have given her sacrifice more weight and also given you more time to flesh out Gore. Because I think you would have had you would have had to do less with Jane in the first movie and more with Gore in the first. And then you weight Jane heavier in the second and Gore less in the second. And then their their arcs and their stories are better fleshed out. Or at the very least, it's a three-hour movie. Because there's a three-hour story here. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was two hours. I think you can. I think you can hit your marks on a with all those points you had with a three-hour movie. I think they could. Yeah, it could because you're talking about towards very close to the the back end of Act Two, or in the, even in the middle of Act Two, the big reveal is to Thor that she has cancer. You know. Yeah, and then and you really you, sit with it. Yeah, and maybe you have Hercules go help Gore in that in that sense. And then he sees Thor share his power. You know, and, and then that's his wake up of like, oh shit, this guy's different. Like, my dad would never do that. You know, like that's him, that's like in this crazy thing. Like, like Gore never brings that up. Like that whole line that's in the trailer, like you're different from the other gods I've killed. He doesn't say this in the movie. Nope. Like clearly that was a an angle they were gonna maybe do in a different cut of the movie. Because that's Thor's like Odin's son's arc in the comic is that he is, you know, like different than other gods. Yep. That's not really explored here in any way. And I think that's a, a misstep in the movie. And I think letting it breathe more gives you the room to explore that and yeah. still do your other two things that you wanted to do with Jane and Gore. And, and I think that's just, I mean, it was a missed opportunity to tell a better Thor story. Well, I think I think you 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 mentioned some really good points, and I think what we're the the way to stretch this to three hours is where I think Taika failed this movie was he didn't want because the sad part or the emotional part of the movie is Jane's dying of cancer, right, and her death at the end, right. Those are the big things in the movie, but outside of that, I think Taika was really scared to put other like more emotion into the film and more and just make sure we keep it tight with the humor Does that makes sense because yeah it felt like when it's, one, uh, yeah when one joke was done here comes another one right on top of it and another one right on top of it but then we have the momentum of the joke killer with jane's you know in, in you know sick and in, in, at the hospital and then we have jane's like kind of jokes and then we have zeus be the whole thing at, and you know the, uh, what was the city again i forget the city. omnipotent it's, city um, omnipotent city like the humor in there and then you know because i think he, like the beats were very boom 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 with the jokes rather than boom 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 emotion boom 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 emotion like i think that for for taika it was like trying to keep a pace of the jokes to where the emotion really doesn't change the movie completely but let's and you and i talked about this and people were talking about it online this weekend um it's a Thor, the MCU Thor is a very tragic character, man. Everyone around him that he loves is dead. Like, seriously. And, and it's not until the back half of this movie he even feels like Thor. Like, yeah. when he's telling Jane, you can't pick up, when he, when he says, like, you can't pick up that damned hammer again. Like, yeah. that was Hemsworth at his best. Yeah. I was like, this dude just literally can't take losing someone else. You know, like, this person that, you know, he's finally willing to admit, I still love you. And I don't want to lose you. And it's his hammer that's doing it to her. You know, like that is an extra tragic thing that they just don't give enough time. You know, like he doesn't feel like the Ragnarok Thor until that third act. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the same character from Ragnarok. He's a fucking oaf in the first two acts of this movie. Like he's beyond anything we've ever seen. And he's like, he cranked up to a 13. It's like, dude, leave it an eight. You know, like he was a kind of dumb oaf in Infinity War, where, you know, but like he's, you know, not understanding of language and all that kind of stuff. And it's played for jokes. That was like the perfect pocket for Thor, not, you know, complete and total fucking himbo. Right? Like that's way too much for Thor. And that really came across here for me. It's just, wow, he is not, this feels weird. Until he finds out Jane's dying and he like, you know, they figure it out in the back half of the movie. Then he actually feels like Thor. Which kind of sucks because the first half. I mean, he just wasn't a fun character to be around. He was just cringy the whole time. 
Well, you talk about something important that that the piece of dialogue from Gore that was that was in the trailer that wasn't in the movie. Now it makes me wonder what Lena Headey's part was in this film. Yeah, because she got cut. it was entirely cut out, right? Yeah, completely cut, completely cut. Like you would think that she would have to play some type of pivotal role, then, right? Yeah, was she supposed to like, play his wife? Like Gore's wife, I possibly, and that would really. To or me, was I she think, Eternity? Like, was Eternity supposed to be sentient? And by the way, loved the CGI for Eternity. I yeah. was so geeking, so geeking out with Eternity. But it's possible they, they they tried to make a humanized version of Eternity, and it didn't work. It's possible. Yeah, I don't know, but like like they they haven't said what her what her role was in this film, but it was completely gutted out and. I'm very curious on what what she what it was like what her role was. Now, Russell Crowe as Zeus, fucking hilarious. I liked him. I liked those moments that he had, though it did open up a lot of questions about the gods and their role in the universe, like with a Nepotan city. Like, I really don't. I wanted to understand a little bit more why the gods basically shut out their 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 worlds. You know, like why they're just like. We're going to hang out here. There had to have been a reason why. Something had to have happened, right? Maybe it was tied into what happened with the Eternals. Like, you know, the Celestials were super Well, they pissed. were there. They're in the movie. Too. Yeah. But, it, but it wasn't... But it wasn't... Um, the one we see in Eternals, at the, least. The, not the one we see in Eternals. It wasn't him. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I got to ask this, Sif. Did they do her justice or no? I don't know. Like, again, I, I think that. she would have had a lot more to do if it was a split or longer movie. Yeah. I think she would have had a really good, because she knew Jane before mm -hmm. everything shit kicked off in Ragnarok and everything. Yeah. You yeah. Know, she, like, was, she met her in the first movie. Yeah. Right. Like, maybe, maybe they set up that her and Jane had, like, been communicating or something, like, the whole time. Right. Like, that had been, because clearly Sif's out and about in the universe doing things. Yeah. Wouldn't be a shock to have been that she's come to Earth a number of times and just like hung out with Jane and Darcy, right? Like, because again, all her friends are dead too. Yep. You know, so that wouldn't have been crazy. And like having Thor find her instead of having her be on Earth, I think that I think I would have actually liked it if she was on Earth with Asgard, like she came back to Asgard, you know, after they settled on Earth. Sure. And you know, like. You didn't have to have her lose an arm. That really seems crazy. I don't. I don't. I well, don't. I, yeah. Well, because in the in the, in the in, before the mighty Thor, Odinson loses his arm. Yeah. Remember. So that's. I think that was kind of like taking that comic book angle and putting it on a different character rather than it being true. Thor, but it was one of those right? things like you don't. If you're not going to do it to Thor, you don't need to do it to anybody. I think the whole point of it was just to show how vicious Gore the God Butcher was. Like he cut her arm off and just said, "Fuck it, leave her alive to suffer." That's what I think. Yeah, I could see it. It just felt random because like she's got nothing else to do in the story. She just goes off to the infirmary, and we don't see her until uh, the last stinger of the movie, where she's helping to train the new, you know, basically the new Heimdall, and with his son. Yeah. Who I liked his character. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, the other rest of the other kids didn't have much to do, but Heimdall's son, of course, would take the lead in terms of the importance to the you know, in the kids part of the story. So. And this kid certainly looked the part. So, so let's just talk about something real quick. The Necro Sword. Yeah. Was it really destroyed? Because remember, the origin of the Necro Sword is tied into Noel, the biggest, the the creator of the symbiotes in the entire universe. Obviously, Noel is in their back pocket, but the sword wasn't destroyed. Truly, right? not all of the pieces were. Yeah. I think that's how you would maybe get to the creation of symbiotes or something like that is through the remnants of the sword. Yeah. Okay. I could see that for sure. I mean, because I could see Noel may not, he may not even lead a phase down the road, but he could be like in a movie, a, a lead villain in a movie. Um, I think if if they do another Thor movie, which it's possible, though Hemsworth has said he might, he, think, he thinks he might be wrapped up. If they do another Thor movie, I think they have to circle back with Loki, obviously. Like yes. I know we're getting, we're getting season two of Loki uh, early next year. They're They're filming it right now. Which is great, loved Loki, um, but I think that as we're moving forward with this phase and potentially Kang the Conqueror becoming a big part of this phase, like the potentially the leading up to being the big bad villain at the end of this phase, I have a thought that maybe at some point Loki does have to reach out to Thor and let him know that he's alive, but it's not his same Loki in terms of like timeline wise. Yeah, but um, I think at some point 
once we figure out what Loki's role is with the TVA next season, I think at some point he does have to jump in because we're obviously going to be leading. By the time we get, we're going to get season two of Loki next early next year, I'm thinking. And then in the summertime next year, we're getting Ant-Man Quantum Mania, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going fully into Kang the Conqueror next year, obviously. So, but it does like, what the hell is going to happen with the Fantastic Four now? Shit. Like that's going to be a, I could uh, see Thor just turning into an Avengers only character for the next movie. Okay, and I'm like cool we, with that. we won't see him until then, unless he shows up in a Loki like kind of property. Because clearly Hemsworth's around. I mean, he did the voice for What If, you know. So like, yeah. he still wants like is still around to be Thor, but obviously it's a shitload of work to stay that big. Yeah, like that's 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 insane on your body, right? And you know, pushing it, forty, yeah. Like, yeah. and he's not the Rock. Like he's not. That's not his persona. Like his brand isn't being that big. No. So I just don't think that's in the cards for him to stay Thor forever, but I could see him doing it for, you know, just a movie because he'd be in the armor, right? Like it wouldn't matter, you know, and just him rocking the ax because clearly he likes the character. He's the only guy to come back for four movies. Him and Hiddleston are the longest running characters at this point who are still alive. Who would have thought that watching that first Thor movie? Right? That's crazy. (laughs) That's bonkers to me. Those are the two that are still kicking around. Yeah. Are you kidding me? But in some ways, it kind of makes sense because they were never the stars, you know. It was, it was, you know, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans' cap were clearly like the forefront of it all. Yeah. So, and Hemsworth has got to have a last ride, you know. Like, if if you're gonna say goodbye to Hemsworth, 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 Hemsworth's Thor, he needs a kick-ass swung song. Like, you need to go and do something fucking cool with him. You know, like maybe, maybe he throws down with Zeus and they kill each other or something, you know, like, or, you know, pick whatever. Or you leave him with the point where maybe Hemsworth is like, oh, I'll come back someday. So just like write me off into the sunset and I'll be around. I don't know. That's that's the interesting part with it, because Evans was clearly just done with it. It doesn't yeah. really want to come back for any, like pretty much anything, which is fair enough. Like, you know, he's an actor who wants to go do other things. Totally, totally fine. I'm curious where they're going to go with Thor long term in the MCU. Because he's a character that is essentially an immortal. So I don't know. It'd be be very interesting to see where he ends up and how he impacts the MCU story going forward. Yeah, because he obviously has ties to Earth. And unless he's killed, even if he's existing out in the universe somewhere else, if Earth is in trouble, he has to show up. And he can now because Heimdall's kid knows how to contact him. Yeah, exactly. Right, which was a, like that. I think is an interesting nugget that could get picked up for future stories with him. Even just yeah. to have him, he gets brought in as the ringer to kick someone's ass, right? Like, and Hemsworth cracks a few jokes, puts down Stormbreaker, and he's you know fucking back off into the universe again. Right? Clearly, also they're setting up going somewhere with Hercules too, which yep. is fucking Roy Kent. Are you kidding me? Oh God, man! Brett Goldstein being Hercules, I fucking died. I I was losing it, and I, I as soon as he's like leaning over and he says, "My son Hercules," as soon as the shot goes to him, I saw, I realized it was him. I was the only one in the theater to laugh, and it took everyone else like a couple seconds to register who it was. He and it wasn't singing. until he, he's there, he's there, he's, he's there. every fucking he's where. where. Roy Kent, <laughs> uh, great character, great actor too. Brett Goldstein's the man. That's why I was like, man, I want to, I want to actually go some more with Hercules. Because if we're not going to go anywhere with Thor for a while, why not make it a two-parter? You know, go fucking ball, all out with it and give us Brett Goldstein in the back half of the movie at some point to fucking do something. Because I don't know if they're ever going to pick up with him if Thor doesn't come back and do his own movie. How do you fit Hercules into the into a story without Thor? Yeah. As the as the MCU is currently constructed, is the movie about Hercules like? just exploring the universe because maybe he hasn't been outside of omnipotent city for thousands of years. And now he's like rediscovering what humanity is. And he realizes, you know, I'm on this mission to kill Thor and whatever. And then he realizes, Oh man, Thor's Thor's pretty cool. We should be friends. You know, maybe, maybe he gets his own movie. And then that's where Thor shows up at the end to fight the villain alongside him. Well, if there is a Hercules movie, it's got to be a Disney Plus movie. That would not carry... It wouldn't do well in the box office. No, I don't think so. Or maybe it's a series. Exploring the other different parts of like the God realm as he's looking for Thor. 
and you get and you could also get squeeze Asgard in there. You guys do Asgard. You could do Wakanda. You could do Egypt, right? Because yeah. we've ex- we've been exploring on the TV side these different yep. realms of the after, you know, like of their afterlife, and you know these various different like religion, like God groups. You know, and I think about it, and with Goldstein's resume and TV, that actually kind of makes sense. Yeah, I I actually wouldn't mind seeing that because then you could get that he's the fish out of water, right? Yeah kind of story and you know goldstein can carry comedy like we know that we we have everybody watches ted lasso brett goldstein's the man as him just kind of that like gruff fresh out of water play the comedy off him he's the straight man like kind of and then the comedy happens around him i just think that you can make a cool story out of that and maybe you could get hemsworth back for that for at least one episode to be like just show up you don't have to be big you know you can do whatever because clearly you're only this big because of Hogan, yeah. right? Like, he's so much bigger in this than he was in Ragnarok. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Like, that, the scene in Omnipotent City is like, Jesus, that dude's jacked. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. fucking huge. Yeah, he got super ripped. So maybe it's more like, hey, just show up like he did in Ragnarok, which would be a lot easier to pull off with his frame because he wasn't really that much bigger than even, like, in Extraction. Stuff like that. Like, no. that seems like a level of fitness that's easier to attain with a lot less work. Or- well, let's be real. He was he was really big in Thor, the first Thor movie, but he obviously was about twenty pounds lighter for Avengers because he looked a lot smaller. Yeah, they changed his look looked, up totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, of course, the eyebrows and the hair. Everything yeah, they let changed. him have his natural beard his, color. His natural be- natural beard color, his natural eyebrow color. Um, someone had pointed out, can we get somebody to go back? Can we get Disney to go back retroactively change his eyebrows? In the Dude, first Thor imagine movie? if young Thor had showed up and he was still blonde everywhere and have the current <laughs> Thor be like. God, you look like a tool. Like something like that. That would oh, have been fucking amazing. That would have been awesome. God, again, missed opportunity. <laughs> which basically sums but, up this movie. But you pointed out something really good is that you can have him be in his armor. So he doesn't have to be as big. No. I mean, the the I the really really the reason why he is so jacked is because of the shirtless scenes, right? But mm-hmm. we know this. Okay, well, future he, he doesn't have to be play a, a a massive part in these movies going forward, but he can wear the armor, and he still will look like, you know, Chris Hemsworth is just a big dude, you know. Yeah, he's a big guy. He's gonna be big no matter what yeah, happens. What? Yeah. Uh, so I think like, I think like you can and you can have him pop up in the armor because that's what they do with other heroes now. Yeah. You know, like oh, Homelander, like the guy that plays Homelander. He's a very thin guy. He just wears did you the- see that story with Eccles and he's like. Uh, he was saying how, like, Star was giving him shit, because he's like, yeah, why'd you do all that work in the gym? You could have just got a muscle suit. And yeah. Like, Fuck. Because Eggle's like, got legit pretty jacked. Yeah. Because, of course, he's got that scene coming out of the, you know, the icebox, and, you know, he's fully nude. But, like, yep. and he was clearly very ripped. That's, a like, a workout, dehydrate yourself kind of scene. Yeah. But still, he put in a lot of work. So, like, you don't have to do that to be still imposing and big. Because other than that one scene, he's always in his uniform. Yep. So, it doesn't really matter. So, I'm curious to see. Uh, now that I really think about it, man, though, that uh, Brett Goldstein led Hercules MCU show. And then throughout the, you know, throughout the six episodes or whatever it is, he becomes, you know, he pulls kind of like a Loki arc of where, like, oh, he under- like he figures out how to be a good guy. You know, and yep. actually be a hero, not just say he's a hero. I actually like that because doesn't he play off with She Hulk quite a bit in the comics? Yes, he does. In the comics, he does. And, yeah. and, so, and I'm crossing my DC because he's a character that exists both in DC and in Marvel. Because Wonder yep. Woman, of course, so tied in with the Greek gods. Hercules yep. is her half brother. So, like, it, I'm maybe crossing up my versions. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he was tied in with She Hulk. So, like, you could have him have a series on Earth, just like, you know, finding, like, talking to all the various different god groups, like, go to the Amazon, right? Like, go to Egypt. Go up and, like, maybe the finale's in New Asgard. You know, as he try, as he's he's finding allies to, like, go take out the Asgardians, but then he realizes, oh, they're just people trying to survive, and he, like, helps save them from whatever he set in motion. That'd be a fun series. I'd be game to watch that. Okay. I'm gonna throw it out there. Secondary character to introduce in the Hercules series. Wonder Man. Yes. Like, just a goofy character to play off of Because they're setting up a, a Wonder Man show. 
Yeah. I, I think that would be a good a good way to kind of because obviously it's better to because Wonder Man, very few people know about Wonder Man. Unless you're a true deep Marvel Avengers fan, you don't know who the hell Mar Wonder Man is. He's a Hollywood actor as his alter ego, whatever. I think that it would be a good way to kind of just inch him into the MCU on his own show would be to have him show up like in a Hercules show where like Hercules is trying to figure things out on Earth and he runs into this guy and they become kind of quasi buddies, you know, um, and he helps him understand how to be human, you know, human on Earth. So. Yeah, and maybe he doesn't um, even need a big fight at the end. Like maybe the whole no. point is just, oh, he figures out how to not be a tool. Like yeah. that's perfectly fine for a show. Yeah. It doesn't I have to be could... end of the world CGI spe you know, spectacle. There could have been so much more with this movie. I'm not disappointed in it, but like I said, this was the, it probably should have been closer to three hours, and you had so much you could have really. Jane, I think Jane, we lost a lot in terms yeah, of. Yeah, it's only like out. ten minutes from where Thor realizes she's dying to the sacrifice. Yep. yep. Like that feels like it needed a lot more time, and she well, and, needed more time to come with terms because she, she was clearly in denial. Yeah. And like all of a sudden, it's over. It's like needed something more with her a flashback a scene with sif and valkyrie or something like something to get her there and have it make more sense and feel less rushed yeah. the story beats themselves totally fine and actually sound pretty cool it just i think the other thing i put was it's a movie that is less than the sum of its parts versus a movie that's more than the sum of its parts like ragnarok is more than the sum of its parts Okay. Because it really lets that heart shine through, ties everything together, right? And it's also a tighter movie just in terms of the cast, right? Like, yeah. it's it's just Hela, right? And then you got the Surtur bookends, right? And then this movie doesn't really have that so much. Like, it just feels like it's a lot of mishmashing different pieces that don't all work in concert together, and thus it doesn't function as well. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's, again, not a bad movie. I would actually put it probably above. You know, I don't know if I'd put it above Doctor Strange of the Phase Four movies. Where would you slot it? Yeah, and I will. I don't know if I count Black Widow as Phase Four because it slots in above ahead of Endgame. Uh, and that one's such a weird one because like this should have been in Phase Three, Feige, and you know it. Yeah, it should have been. So I don't know if I count that one. That movie was six six years too late, honestly. Yeah, um, it would have been great if it was six years earlier. Yeah. I'm going to say I prefer Doctor Strange over Love and Thunder. So we're so you, I'm guessing your ranking probably goes Shang Chi, Doctor Strange, Thor, Eternals. Yes. And a distant yeah. Eternals at that. Yep. That yep. that tracks for me. Yep. I would go Shang Chi. The first two acts of Shang Chi, as as we noted in our review of that, I had problems with its finale. Yeah. Much like I had problems with the Black Panther finale. Its messaging gets muddled. It's not the same movie as it was the first two acts. It feels disjointed even though it's still fine and competent enough it just doesn't feel like it fits but i think those first two acts are so strong in shang chi that it deserves to have the front of the phase four movies dr strange much like thor it feels like spinning wheels like things need you know figuring things out some arcs are cool some are rushed some don't make sense and we don't know where we're going which that's a distant priority you don't have to have a, a vision for where they're going right now like that's not 100% necessary. It just it just you can, it's an impending presence you're always going to feel because they set themselves up for that with what they did with Infinity War and Endgame. Like that's the bed they made. And either they got to tell the audience shut off about it or actually do something about it. And it doesn't feel like they're doing that. Well, yeah, the, the reason why is because at the end of the first phase we knew Thanos we did Thanos. Thanos, and Thanos was the closing shot, the smile. We knew that that's that's what that was our literal end game for this storyline, and we really don't have that at this point. Because I we, think they we, wanted it to be Kang, yeah. but the, how the production timeline all got fucked up, I don't know if they're going to be able to make that stick as emotionally. Yeah, because imagine Ant Man and the Quantum Mania coming out right on the heels of Loki. You know, you get Immortus, and then you get Kang, and all the, and then you had then he's in the stinger of all the other stuff that would have built up into the next Avengers movie much more significantly or whatever they call the next big team up movie. That's eventually going to happen. They say it's Probably way down the road though. Yeah. yeah. They, Which yeah. is fine. Standalone stories, absolutely nothing wrong with them. And that's actually something DC does pretty well. 
which is why I'm actually kind of excited to see this Black Adam, because like clearly it's not tied into the main DCEU so far. They're going to have to reset their universe if they want to have it be a shared world and all that. And Fury of the Gods, predictably, I think is going to be really good too. Yeah. I think that part of the DC universe is really solid, but they're, they're telling really fun individual disconnected stories. And that's their point though. Like they're intentionally doing that. Yeah. It doesn't feel like Marvel is intentionally doing it and they just are happening to do it. I think the other problem with this, with Marvel is they're, um, they're overloading us with characters at this point. It's a lot. And and here's the thing is that we, 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 we are forgetting a, a couple of big things here. Marvel is now, well, Disney and Marvel are now pressuring themselves. They've got to, they've got to squeeze in the Fantastic Four origin story. We've got to squeeze in the X Men here in the next couple of years because fans are going to get really pissed about that, right? Um, you took them. You took them from Fox. Fucking yeah. do something with you them. You spent you spent billions of dollars for Fox to get those characters back. Do something. Do something. Do something. And we, you know, we've been postulating for years now where where they were going to show up, right? We all thought that that we we got Xavier in Multiverse of Madness finally, but I think that was more of a fan service thing, more lesser. Oh, for sure. You know, same thing with John Krasinski. That was Raimi kind of like, just like, here you go, guys, just because you guys always wanted it, you know, like that. Rather than like Marvel saying, we want Reed Richards, we want Professor X in this, just bring them into this world. I think it was more of like... Oh, yeah. And they've confirmed that as much. Yeah. So I think think that we have that. We have Daredevil coming back. We have potentially Jessica Jones and Luke Cage potentially coming back. Like... I think, and then all of the new characters, which are not even B class characters, they're C class. Echo is a C class character. She Hulk is a C class character. They're all getting their shows right now. And even if Hercules got his own show, that is really a B to C player in in, in the in the, like the list of Marvel like heroes. So I think we're getting a, a like a, a gluttony of characters at this point. So I think Marvel's kind of putting themselves in a tough situation with the, the formula that they have. It but just they, they hit, established. It just hit me. What's up? This Thor, the first two acts, felt like Hercules in the comics. Okay. Because he's yeah. that kind of like yeah. oafish dumbass. Yeah. Very oafish in the comics, yes. Whereas yeah. Thor's not. Yeah. You know? So like that that was the problem I had. I didn't quite know how to put it into terms. Now I do. Okay. Yeah. So. He's a very goofy character. And I think Dan was Dan Slot one of the writers on Hercules for a while. I can't remember if that because it feels like at this point Thor should have been over his full of himself shit. Well, I mean, that was the, that was the intro. Was he took his his post like his depressive state and he built out a new look and a new approach, right? Okay, but then we get obviously he's still suffering, but it wasn't like there wasn't like a raw visceral reaction. It was more of a goofiness, and yeah, it got there goofier, was goofier. yeah no examination of him re- regressing. No, no. Which, because clearly the character has regressed emotionally. Yeah. Nobody mentions it. And it's not until he realizes Jane's dying that he snaps out of it. Yeah. Which, again, yeah. feels like a, just a wasted character beat. But I don't want to beat that dead horse. We got to get sure. out of here. It's been an hour 40, give or take. It's, yeah, we had a lot to catch up on, man. A lot we of did. finales, a lot of content. So, yeah. So, speaking of content, episode 47 is going to have us talking about Miss Marvel. The finale drops this coming Wednesday, which has been a standout first season, much like yep. the standout first season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which, Fusion, have you ever watched the original series? Yes, I have. The, the episode Balance of Terror, where they find out yeah. about the Romulans and all that? Yes, the season The season one finale is a direct mirror of that alternate universe telling of Balance of Terror. Okay. And it is incredibly minutiae, like, level detail matching it. Okay. But with an alternate universe take tying it into the emotional beat of Captain Pike, like realizing he shouldn't change his, like the future to save himself mm-hmm. and that there's bigger things than him in the, in the universe. And the first season is so amazing in its characters, storytelling. They tell tons of different types of stories. We got body swap. We got fucking alien level horror. We got this like mystical, like, like this time travel, like it's not about you kind of story. Like there's so much fucking cool shit in that show that I cannot stop gushing about. And I want you to watch all 10 episodes, binge that shit in a week, and then we're going to geek out about it. Yes, now that the season is over, I'm going to re-up my Paramount Plus, and I'm going to watch Strange New Worlds. It's going to be great. And I'm hoping I could find another mutual that is a Trekkie, and we can get him on here, or her on here, and just talk shop about Star Trek for an episode. Oh, yeah. Because I love Star Trek. Maybe we'll do that in the lead-up to Lower Decks. Okay. Yeah, sure. That'll be a good time. 
Uh, we're, in a good, we're, in a good, we're in a good pace, man. We're getting Star Trek. Like, we're getting momentum with the Star Trek IP, man. This Hell is good yeah. Time. Like, if they don't do anything now with TOS movies yeah. reboot, I'm going to be upset. I mean, like, come on, guys. It's right there. Clearly fans are Kel- wanting it. Apparently, apparently Paramount's in full gear trying to get the Kelvin verse uh, fourth movie. Well, that's running. the thing is, though, like, Paramount, it's, it's, it's the prime timeline stuff people are really liking. I know. Like, but people can, are really they, liking the prime timeline shit. But you can find a way to put them together. Hopefully. I'm game. Star Trek Generations, anyone? Hello? Oh, I don't know if you want to bring that one up. Uh, that's true. It wasn't a good movie. but It was a fine episode of a show. Yeah. Much like Insurrection. Where I completely forgot about how much money problems they had on that episode. Like, you can... Or that, sh- that movie. You can definitely tell they ran out of money about two-thirds of the way through that movie. Because yeah. it looks bad after a point. You're like, oof. Oof. Paramount, what did you do to these people? You give them fucking, like, fucking peanuts yeah. for a Star Trek movie. Come on. You failed them. But it's, CGI, uh, CGI has made things a lot better, though, man. That's true. I mean, they gave them a fucking joystick. It's fucking Enterprise E. <laughs> right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that's where you're like, oh, they have no money left. Like, I oh, plan on sitting down with Strange. I plan on sitting down with Strange New Worlds and getting into it, man. It's gonna really, be, you're gonna, ha- you're gonna absolutely love it. Like I told Joey, you don't have to know anything about Discovery or any prior show. Like they do a great job explaining it in in the pilot, and it's a great pilot. Cool. Like very much like hopeful, uplifting. You know, hope for the future kind of story. Awesome sci-fi, in a very different way than like The Expanse, which is hard sci-fi. This is just more traditional science, heavy on the fiction, kind of kind of storytelling which is what makes star trek so great well i think that about wraps it up here for episode number 46 of course you can follow both of us on the twitter i'm at mr warper he's at it's mr fusion stay tuned to twitch.tv slash mr warper where we live stream our recordings of course i put this out on my mr warper youtube channel all of various podcast services so like and share and you know make sure why did i suddenly drop so many frames Uh oh Something happened on my computer? Not on the stream side. It skipped for the record for the recording. Uh-oh. Hope that doesn't screw things up. That was very weird. Uh, anyway, before thing, anything else goes off the rails, let's get out of here. So I'm probably going to be back this next week, this weekend yet, to play some more Outer Worlds. But other than that, we'll probably see you next week sometime for episode number 47. Bye, everybody. <laughs>